And I think you can hear and see from uh, Gervais' presentation and also from Nelly's presentation that there is a vast amount of data in this report, probably more statistics, more new and original data than we've ever had before in any world migration report. And in addition to what has been presented today, uh, there are other statistics which I think are terribly relevant for the international policy debate about migration and development. And I'll just mention one of those. In uh, chapter four of the report, we're able to give you for the first time ever a figure which tells us what proportion of migrants in the north and the south actually send remittances, actually send money back home. Now, the whole migration and development debate tends to focus on money and the huge sums of money that are sent uh, between North and South. But often we don't pay enough attention to this, the, to understanding who is actually sending this money, why are they sending this money, and why is it that large numbers of migrants are not sending money back home? And there are interesting differences which come out of the report. So as Gervais uh, pointed out at the beginning of his presentation, I would urge all of you to take a close look at the report because it does have a very rich set of statistics and data. At the same time, um, it sets us with a challenge because it's quite difficult to make generalizations and draw conclusions from such a, a, a rich source of information. But I'll try to sum up now by highlighting uh, some of what we think are some of the key important messages from this report. And I think a key one to carry forward to the high-level dialogue is that this report, in a unique way, can demonst has demonstrated that migration does improve well-being across a range of different di dimensions. And as Nelly has explained, only you, on, for the first time, we've been able to compare the lives of migrants with people who stayed behind in the country of origin who have a similar profile, what we've called match stayers. And that is a unique exercise. That has not been possible before in the migration field. So that's a, a new comparison. So we can say that migration improves well-being. At the same time, secondly, we've been able to compare the lives of migrants and non-migrants. And usually the comparison that is made, because we have much better data in the OECD countries and much better data in the developed part of the world, is that we usually look at the situation of migrants in the US, in Europe, in Australia, and we compare their situation with natives. This time, we've been able to present a global picture and we're able to show that li what is life really like for a migrant, whether he or she moves to the north or to the south. And I think there are very interesting findings that we've been able to demonstrate in this report showing that well-being does matter according to where you come from and where you go to. We know that these, these, the, these terms north and south are generalizations and there are different ways of defining north and south. But we wanted to use these terms to make, I think, a political point in this, in this report um, because these terms are shorthand for developed and developing. And I think what we wanted to show was that there are important differences according to uh, these various pathways. And I think what Nelly's chapter four um, findings show in particular is that north-north migration is overwhelmingly positive. South-north migration, the results are mixed. We see certain positive results in terms of economic gains, certainly people gain in income, but in other terms, they rate their lives less well than that of the native born. In terms of north-south flows, it's important to remember that among the north-south population, that is moving to the, the south, we have a mixed group. We have young people who may be leaving places like Portugal, uh, looking for work in Brazil, in Angola and, and Mozambique, but we also have American retirees going to Panama and Mexico in, in, in uh, increasing numbers. And um, we often don't think about the implications for development of those types of movement. And um, 
If you look at the age breakdown, and again, I encourage you to look at the statistics in the report, you see differences in the age breakdown of migrants according to these pathways. And many of the people moving from north to south are much older than the people moving from south to north. And then finally, um, perhaps the bleakest picture in this report is, and the, perhaps the area of greatest policy concern is South-South migration, which has been neglected in the migration and development debate. It's only recently, for example, that the GFMD has begun to focus much more on South-South migration in its deliberations. And I think this report encourage, uh, encourages us to investigate much more uh, and to focus much more on the lives of migrants in the South. Um, now, turning to the five key messages of the report, uh, as a number of speakers have said, we wanted to, in the lead up to the high level dialogue, to try and bring the discussion back to the migrant, to, the hu to human welfare and human well being. Too often, the debate in, uh, in the migration and development field is about money. It's about remittances, it's about financial help. And we often lose sight of the fact that migrants have to work very hard in new destinations, they have to set up a, uh, to create a new life for themselves in order to send that money back home. And, and what is the cost of doing that? Secondly, um, quite deliberately, we wanted to use the term well-being because that is the language of the development community. And too often, the development community does not engage fully in this migration and development debate. Uh, and we wanted to start with the concept of well-being, which is mentioned in the Millennium, De De Millennium Declaration as the major purpose of development. Development is about improving human well-being. So starting from that concept, we have prepared here the first ever report on the well-being of migrants. And um, I think this is terribly important when we come to the post-2015 debate, which I'll come to in a moment. Then thirdly, before the HLD, we wanted to look at the relationship by, between migration and development in, in a different way and encourage you to forget about, or not, or not, not forget about, but to, to not be over over concerned with old notions about development and migration and migration being a result of a lack of development often the development community um, feels reluctant to talk about migration because they think migration is something negative that results from a lack of a lack of opportunities um, and i think what this report shows is that only a minority of all migrants in the world move from south to north, from developing to developed countries. As Gervais pointed out, if you look at the rate of migration in the north, it's actually higher than in the south, often because it's easier for people to move in the north. There are fewer barriers to movement, there are more opportunities for them, and that brings gains. So migration, uh, so that, that is an important point to keep in mind. So we hope that we've been able to inject some fresh thinking into the migration and development debate ahead of the high-level dialogue. And then finally, um, we think that this Gallup World Poll has a great deal of potential uh, to help us understand how the well-being of migrants will change in the future. And we think that is terribly important for the post-2015 debate about human develop, uh, the, sorry, about the future of the global development agenda. Because in recent, in recent years, we have been trying to ensure that migration is integrated into that post-2015 debate. And there are different ways in which that could happen. But I think one of the key messages that we're trying to get across is that if you want to talk about development and societal progress, you have to keep in mind that, you, or you have to ensure that vulnerable groups like migrants are not mi marginalized, discriminated, forgotten about. And a key message, I think, from the high level, uh, for the, from the um, sorry, report of the high level panel, which has recently um, reported to the Secretary General on the future of the global development agenda, is that. Nobody should be left behind when we talk about the new global development agenda. And I think what this report enables us to do is to say something about
the well-being of migrants and to continue to report on their well-being to ensure that they are not left behind and not forgotten about in this broader discussion about the future of the global development agenda. Um, next slide, please. So um, just, to, just to conclude, um, the report has um, this structure. And in addition to all the statistics, I would urge you to read the portraits in the report. We tried to introduce a human dimension into this report and tell you about the lives of real people who've migrated either from south to south, south to north, north to north, north to south. And so there are some really interesting stories in the report. And we've also tried to capture the fact that clearly this report cannot, because of the nature of the Gallup World Poll, it cannot provide a completely representative picture of the different categories of migrants that exist in, in the world today. It is a broad generalization. And so we've tried to highlight in those portraits problems to do with trafficking or stranded migrants in Ethiopia and other uh, different uh, categories of vulnerability and, and, and the stories of vulnerable migrants that, it, that are not easy to capture in the Gallup World Poll. Um, Finally, if you want um, further information, um, including, I think, this presentation today, um, you will be able to collect, uh, you'll be able to obtain that information from our website, including um, some uh, information, uh, in including, sorry, fact sheets, the press release, and other reference materials. Finally, um, I'd like to say a very big thank you, first of all, to the governments who have supported the production of this report, Australia, Hungary, and Switzerland. And I would like to give a heartfelt thanks to the many colleagues in IOM who worked tirelessly over the last two years or so in preparing this report. This is really a team effort that involves um, contributions from our translators, our publications team, our donor relations team, and our research team. And I'd like to thank all of them um, uh, for contributing to this report. And we hope uh, that you will find this report useful um, in your future work.